as we've said, Allah Azza wa Jal has mandated rituals at the end of Ramadan <clears throat> as a form of bidding Ramadan farewell, as a form of what a sunnah prayer does to the fard, where it completes whatever short flaws were there in the fard. Likewise, this is something that Islam mandated upon the Muslims in the end of the month of Ramadan as a conclusion. <clears throat> Among these rituals is what is known as Zakatul Fitr. Zakat is one of the pillars of Islam, but this is specific. This is Zakat Al Fitr. Fitr is when you break your fast. And this is what we call Al Iftar or Fatur. When you break your fast, when you eat the first meal of the day, it's called Fatur or Iftar. So Zakat Al Fitr is something related to breaking your fast. <clears throat> and this is what Allah Azza wa Jal has mandated upon us at the end of the month of Ramadan. <clears throat> Why was it prescribed? It was prescribed for two reasons. One, that it is a means of purification for whatever shortcomings we had during our fasting and to whatever bad things we've said. So as an expiation, we are to give this zakat to erase and expiate what had happened. <clears throat> Second reason is that the day of Eid is a day of celebration and jubilation. So it is inappropriate for the poor, <coughs> and we mean by the poor, the really poor, who don't have a thing. It's inappropriate for them to go and beg people for lunch or for dinner on that day. Therefore, Islam mandates that we give a certain amount of food so that on that day, they would not need to ask anyone or to beg anyone for it. So what is Zakat al-Fitr? Zakat al-Fitr <coughs> mandated by the Prophet ﷺ to be given a particular sa'ar, one sa'ar. Sa'ar is a means of measurement by size, not by weight. So it's a vessel or a container, and this container carries four mud. This is a mud. If I take a scoop with my two hands, this is one mud. So I put four of them, fill them up. Four of them would make a sar. And <clears throat> people's hands vary. If I was in the NBA, my sar would probably be a lot. And if I were from the Far East, then my hands would be so tiny. No, it's the average height and size of a person. And this saw has to be from what is commonly consumed by the people. <coughs> so usually, it is given out of dates, wheat, barley, beans, corn, macaroni, whatever people eat. And you have to pay attention that the weight differs. So one saw of dates is different than one saw of wheat or of macaroni or, or, or etc. So the size is what matters, not the weight. And <clears throat> I have to give it out on behalf of myself and those whom I'm providing for. Providing that they're Muslims. <clears throat> so whether a slave or a free man, a boy or a girl, a male or a female, old or young, I provide for them, they, then I have to give zakat on their behalf. And usually in, <clears throat> in some cultures, the father keeps on giving zakat al-fitr on behalf of his children even if they're earning and they've left to live somewhere else. And this is permissible only if they authorize you. 
So if my son or my daughter have moved out and I want to give zakat al-fitr every year as usual, I have to take the permission. Son, listen, I'm, I'm giving zakat al-fitr on behalf of you and your wife and children. If he says, <clears throat> okay, dad, no problem. This is permissible. And <clears throat> as in the hadith of Abu Sa'id, the hadith of Umar, Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them all. The Prophet specifically, alayhi salatu wasalam, indicated that it has to be food. <clears throat> and he gave categories of food. And the value of each sa' differs from one another. This is what called the vast majority of schools of thought and scholars to state that it is not permissible to give it in cash. <clears throat> it has to be given in actual food items. And it cannot be given in cash. If it's given in cash to the poor, it is invalid. Because the value differs. <clears throat> and because the Prophet had money at his time, alayhi salatu wasalam, yet he ordered the companions to give it in food. So, unlike what Imam Abu Hanifa says, the vast majority of scholars say you have to give it in food. Now, there's no problem in authorizing an agency, an institution, a charity organization, an individual, <clears throat> etc. There's no problem for me to authorize them by giving them the money in their hands and saying to them, you have to give it to the poor in food. So you buy food and give it to them. No problem in that. And when to give it out to the poor? <clears throat> there is a time of permissibility and there's a time of recommendation. The time of recommendation is just before the Eid prayer. <clears throat> the Eid prayer is done after sunrise on the first day of Shawwal. So just before that, between the sunset of the last day of Ramadan till the eight prayer. This all time, the whole time is approximately 12 hours, a little bit less, is sufficient for you to give your zakat al-fitr. This is a recommendation. Sometimes due to big metropolitan cities, you won't be able to know where the poor is, so you may need a little bit more time. <clears throat> There's no problem in giving it out a day or two, like Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father used to do. So a couple of days before Eid, you can give it to the poor without any problem, inshallah. Do I have to have a certain threshold to qualify to give zakat? No. If I have my food for today, to most of us this seems that, come on, we have food for six months in advance. Yeah, but this is what the norm was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. People only had the food of today. <clears throat> so if you have your food and your family's food for today and extra that suffices to give zakat, then you have to give zakat. If you only have your food for today, you're not obliged to give zakat. So if I'm stone broke, and I have only what suffices me for today and tomorrow, give zakat. But then I won't have food for tomorrow. Don't worry. For the likes of you, others will give you zakat. And there's no problem in a group of people, a family of 10, giving the zakat of 10 people to one individual. <clears throat> or the zakat of one individual giving it to a family of 5 or 10 or 15. There's no problem in that. And if you add a little bit more, there's no problem in that either. This is, in a nutshell, what zakat al-fitr is. Now, <clears throat> can I give it on behalf of non-Muslims? No. Do I have to give it on behalf of my maids and drivers and workers? No, because I don't have to provide for them. I give them salaries. But if I want to do it as a form of charity, there's no problem. Do I have to give it on behalf of my uh, uh, <clears throat> pregnant wife? The wife, yes. 
The pregnancy, no, it's not mandatory. But if you do it, then this is recommended as per Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him. He recommended that. But it's not mandatory at all. And <clears throat> do I give it to a specific individual? The answer is yes. You give it to the poor and the needy only. Don't make the same mistake that lots of us do when they select their relatives and loved ones and friends and neighbors and they give them the zakat when actually they're not needy or poor. This is not permissible and it doesn't count. What happens if I was late in giving it? So I went for Eid prayer and the time is up. <clears throat> what can I do? There is nothing for you to do because you're sinful. You have delayed it after its due time. Ask Allah for forgiveness and repent. So do I give it? The answer is yes. This is the right of the poor. Even if you're sinful, you can't just say, okay, time's up. I'm not going to pay it. No, it's mandatory upon you to still pay it and give it to the poor. <coughs>